subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. A new case study published in the New England Journal of Medicine talks about a man who went to a hospital after having a seizure at 4 a.m. The doctors then saw him have a two minute long seizure where he lost consciousness. They started to investigate his medical history and his general health and everything seemed fine and healthy. He didn't smoke, he drank only occasionally and he had been perfectly fine in the days leading up to the seizures. But upon performing a CT scan of his brain, the doctors realized that he had something called neurocysticercosis, which is a parasitic disease caused by the pig tapeworm in the human brain. In this video, we're going to explore this case study. We're going to talk about tapeworms and what neurocysticercosis is, which is very common and is a neglected disease. We'll also be discussing how tapeworms get in the human brain in the first place. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. Cysticercosis is a tissue infection where larvae of tapeworm infect human tissues where they grow and complete their life cycle. Tapeworms are parasites and they need to live in different animal hosts to survive and grow. Humans are their primary host which is where they reach their adult stage but pigs and for some kinds of tapeworms cows are their secondary or intermediate host. Cysticercosis is quite a common disease and is especially prevalent in societies with poor hygiene and if they typically consume pork. It is categorized as a neglected tropical disease, which are diseases that affect tropical regions like Africa, Asia and Central America. These neglected tropical diseases are called neglected because they do not receive enough funding unlike the bigger ones like HIV or malaria. These diseases tend to be ignored as they affect poorer countries more than they do wealthy nations. A form of cysticercosis is neurocysticercosis or NCC as it's called and it is the most common cause of adult epilepsy. These tapeworm eggs and larvae can attach to any tissue in the body once they enter our bloodstream. But if they pass on to the brain, they cause neurocysticercosis. Tapeworms in our intestines are caused by eating undercooked meat. For the tapeworm species, Tania solium, infection occurs when someone eats improperly cooked pork. The pig is infected with the tapeworm and the pig is the intermediate host. So the stomach acids in a pig cause these eggs of the tapeworm to lose their outer protective layer and hatch into larval cysts. These are called oncospheres as they can calcify and become tumor-like. They then pass through the intestinal walls of the pig and infect pig's tissues. When this pig is then undercooked and consumed, tapeworms from the pig latch on to the walls of our stomach using their suckers and obtain nutrition from the food we consume directly. This is why people who typically have worms tend to lose weight. Otherwise, there normally are no other symptoms. When a person's stomach gets infected by tapeworms from eating uncooked meat, the disease caused is called taniasis. These adult tapeworms lay eggs and the infected host, the human, excretes them in their feces. But when those eggs are consumed by us directly, it's a whole other story. People who have taniasis excrete tapeworm eggs and these can also be ingested by humans in unhygienic conditions. This doesn't come from eating meat but instead spreads from feces through either infected water or unwashed vegetables or from feces directly through food if there is bad hygiene. Once the eggs reach the stomach, the same process occurs that occurs in pigs. The microscopic egg's outer covering is degraded through the gastric acids in our stomach and the eggs then invade local tissues. These can then enter muscles, they can enter under our skin, they can enter the brain and they can even get into our eyes. They then complete their life cycle and reach the adult stage. This happens inside of our tissues and this disease is called cysticercosis. When they enter the nervous system or the brain, they cause neurocysticercosis, which is the most severe form of this disease. 
Symptoms are typically headaches but are often seizures and can sometimes also be migraines and even blindness. To treat this, often epilepsy drugs are prescribed to control the seizures and the cysts in the brain are then removed surgically. These cysts are extremely delicate so surgeons are very careful so as to not rupture them. If they do indeed get ruptured, the contents can spill over into the cerebrospinal fluid and this ends up causing meningitis. Meningitis is basically the inflammation of the membranes that cover our brains and our spinal cords. The symptoms of meningitis include fever and headache and the inability to bend our necks. It can often be fatal because it occurs so close to the brain and the spinal cord. Both neurocysticercosis and meningitis are extremely common in sub-Saharan Africa and NCC specifically is extremely common in Asia and Central America. In this case study, this patient who had seizures was a 38-year-old man and he had lived in rural Guatemala before moving to the US. So the doctors were able to use this history and narrow down the cause of his seizures to NCC. He was put on anti-parasitic, anti-seizure and anti-inflammatory drugs and was discharged five days later. There are many hygienic measures that can be taken to prevent neurocysticercosis and simple interventions are often just enough. Pigs and humans just need to be separated and pork needs to be cooked fully. This case study is that of a relatively uncommon disease in the US comparatively, but in poorer countries, the disease is extremely common. The total number of cases each year globally is estimated to be up to 8 million and over 80% of those cases occur in middle and low income countries. About 75% of those cases end in death due to lack of public health infrastructure. Neglected tropical diseases and underfunded diseases like this can be controlled and understood better only with increased funding.